If I had one axle to grind with gaming in 2021, it'd be that it's looking pretty slow for releases. That being the pace, I figured I'd speed things up for myself by getting all sorts of sideways in a good old fashioned arcade racer. And velocity certainly isn't a problem with today's topic, because this is a game that lets you assign two boost buttons. If that doesn't get your wheels hot, nothing will. Much like the time when seriously petrol-headed developer Codemasters took a U-turn back with Micro Machines World Series, Milestone, an Italian developer known for 25 years of racing sims, has downshifted on their complexity to make Hot Wheels Unleashed. That's quite the pedigree to have under your hood. And, to be blunt, something this IP desperately needs if it wants to qualify as a serious contender. There have been no fewer than 26 major Hot Wheels games pooped out since 1984. Metacritic-wise, they represent one big pile-up of a crash. The only survivor among them, the Hot Wheels expansion pack for Forza Horizon 3. It was about as lit as the Hot Wheels logo. Surprisingly, and this may throw some of you for a loop-de-loop, -loop, Hot Wheels Unleashed reeks of quality right off the starting grid. For starters, what we have here isn't some kart racer filled with weaponry, which is kind of weird because technically you can drive a bloody tank. I'd like an Unleashed to a burnout without the road rage, a split second without the weaponized spectacle, a pure racing experience with surprising open world tendencies that's squarely aimed at die-cast die-hards. It's early in the race, but I think this is actually worth getting revved up over. And I'm going to detail why right after this quick two-minute non-commentary taste of it. See you in a bit. Now it's important to know that I have not been given the full picture on Hot Wheels Unleashed. My hands-on preview build only had so much content to tie a kick. 
The only game modes available to me were Quick Race and Split Screen. The former lets you choose your car, a track, and then compete instantly against 12 AI. The latter, Local Multi Mode, was only two players max. That said, I'm told that come day one, we're also going to get a career mode, time attack, and online multi for 12 players. Likewise, I was only allowed to get sideways with 28 cars on 9 tracks. The full game is going to be rocking a total of 60 increasingly weird die-cast cars on 40 tracks. And I can only hope that that will include my personal favourite Hot Wheels, the Homer. And if you're taking suggestions for stats, Milestone, it should be powerful like a gorilla, yet soft and yielding like a Nerf ball. When it comes to tracks, all of the circuits you'll be zipping along will be cobbled together from those actual plastic fantastic strips that you can buy in the store. That said, they're modelled and set in actual physical spaces, themed real-world environments that are way more interactive than you'd probably first imagine. I got to see four of those. The first was the garage, or if you think that's too fancy a term, car hole. It was a once celebrated and distinctly 1980s car shop that's now been left in ruins. The second was a college campus, which is comprised of like a library, classroom, and chemistry lab, all interconnected by a main hallway. There was also a skate park that makes up for its lack of furnishings, with fully sick ramps, rails, and exposed beams. Finally, there was the impressive visuals of a skyscraper under construction. Truly the best environment you could hope for, for a bunch of kids playing with toy cars. Safe as, mate. Interestingly, I'm told that there are two more environments yet to be unveiled. At least one of them will serve as a kind of home base for you. Details are kind of scarce here, but Milestone says it will be a customizable space, looks-wise. And I'm guessing that just ties in with the track builder, which allows you to knock together a spaghetti mess of track pieces and then share your creations with the community. And that's something you can do with the livery editor too. And I bet some of you are gonna go nuts with this, though good luck trying to create a livery that is more suggestive than the Wienermobile. Now let's get to the most important stuff, fun factor and handling. When it comes to feel, Unleashed veers towards decidedly leashed physics with the odd nitro burst of occasional hilarity. On the surface, what we have here is a simple drift system that is initiated with one pump of your brake, and then you can fairly easily adjust your over and understeer by either turning sharper, boosting, or throwing out the anchors again. Kind of like Burnout Paradise, which type of boost system you'll get all depends on the car selected. Some come with multiple tiers, some don't, and every vehicle feels like they have their own distinct personality. For example, you might find a Formula 1 variant that requires a grip racing touch. 
Others work better if you throw your buns out behind you and point your wiener hard at the apex sweet spot. Admittedly, the enemy AI is not the most reactive I've seen in the genre, but this is all perfectly acceptable preview build stuff. On the good side, your foes do seem to intelligently select a branching track path that will best suit their own vehicle strengths. Also, I haven't witnessed them make any dodgy do-it-yourself shortcuts, something that's incredibly satisfying if you manage to pull off yourself. Because if you do go off-road, Unleashed will never grab you by the scruff of the neck. You can literally ditch the race and just go bombing about the world like you're playing some sort of interactive Honey I Shrunk the Kids movie. And all that being said, I did have one moment of more ass than class when I pinballed myself off something to neatly wipe off half a lap and give myself an unbeatable lead. Attempting something like that will represent an incredible risk-reward. Cheerworthy stuff if it benefits you and you do it, but it's gonna suck if you're on the receiving end of it. I'm hoping that they're more freak occurrences rather than learnable, massively exploitable things. But I guess we'll just have to see where Milestone's head is at. As for downsides, it seems to me that the respawning system in place is more up and down than the jump-happy tracks you're racing on. It's great that it's basically instantaneous, but sometimes you're thrown way too far back. But I just think that's tweakable stuff that we probably shouldn't be too worried about. So back to the positives. The split screen here appears to be in rock solid shape, but I really would have liked to have had access to four player mode. Also, for you fellow dads out there, I did the kid test by having my two sons play one another. Specifically, they decided to settle some scores that I didn't even know existed. Hot Dog Car versus Bergamobile, and Stegosaurus versus Velociraptor. May the best freak win. And you know what? I think they had a lot of fun playing it. That said, I don't think Unleashed is going to take the checkered flag when their family game night choices are Mario Kart or Crash Team Racing. Mind you, when it comes time for me to show them the track editor, it could reshuffle Unleashed right to the front of that starter grid. That thing could be a game changer. Also, it just occurred to me, why am I trying to tell you when I can just show you? Here's how split screen gets done. This is a little grudge match between the 8 and 11 year old heirs to my throne. Enjoy!
When it comes to rendering a verdict on what I've seen, I just have to admit once again that I haven't seen everything Unleashed has to offer. Fact is, it's a long and winding and wacky road between now and the release date that's later on in the year. That said, I think that what's here is on pace. Of particular interest to me is the way that the cars in our garage can be upgraded by investing Race 1 currency to boost their stats. And hey, Milestone has won some bonus championship points early with me by saying that microtransactions are off the table. Like this idiot. Apparently, we can earn larger chunks of currency by dismantling earned vehicles we don't need in order to level up the ones we do want through the rarity tiers. Mind you, none of us will be able to chop shop our way into owning a special Super Treasure Hunt tier of cars. I'm guessing at their secret collectibles that are found by snooping around off-road. That could be cool. So far as I can tell, Hot Wheels Unleashed is going to be as fast and as furious as you please. Milestone aren't exactly reinventing the wheel here, they're just making them... uh... hotter. At the risk of sounding like a backseat driver, however, I'm really hoping that a lot of development focus is going to be on the exploratory potential of these open world levels, and also into a track builder that's powerful, but also easy to use. Only time is going to tell on this, of course. For now, I'm pleasantly surprised by Hot Wheels Unleashed. I'm keen to see how it shapes up farther down the road. I really hope milestones stick the landing. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.